as we continue to mill, I want you to think about where my face is and where the muffler outlet is and where the exhaust is flowing. And then ask yourself, do you want one of those uh, steer horn type mufflers with a big old exit both sides? Or do you want one of those mufflers where they go out the front? Just think about that for a second when you're watching this last quarter. Now, if that muffler was blowing up the front, all those chips would be up in my face. And if I had one of those outlets coming, coming out that side, I'd have both the chips and the exhaust up in my face. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Take a look how hot that muffler got. Basically cooked off all the paint. See, milling is a good test of a saw because basically what happens, and this is the 800 pound gorilla in any saw mod type situation is, when you add more gas and air into the situation, you get more heat. To make more power, you have to burn more gas and air. That's what happens, right? Or increase the efficiency of the actual burn through compression. But either way, in order to generate power, you gotta create heat and then the heat gets turned into rotational motion, right? So here's the thing. This, the ability for the saw to cool itself determines on how much power you can put into that system. And um, how long the cuts are matters. So for example, if I've got five second, 10 second cuts, I can put a whole lot of heat into the system and not worry about the cooling because, uh, you know, if it's a race saw, they shut it off let it cool off naturally. You might get a little bit of blow, but you really don't need much because you're not going to generate heat long enough in order to stress the system. Um, if you're bucking logs, you're going from log to log to log to log. Well, now the heat retention begins to matter because you're getting towards that continuous set of cuts. So the saw has to be able to cool itself in order to maintain an operating temperature without damaging internal parts, right? And then milling is the worst because now you have a constant load. It's like a boat on a boat motor where there's a constant load. It never gets a chance to rest. So you have to generate enough power in order to move along, or in this case, move the chain along. But the cooling system and the internal components of the saw are going to get to some steady state where it's going to operate at a temperature based on the efficiency of the burn, how much gas near is being in fact burned, and also how capable the saw is, is of removing the excess heat. Now, if the cooling system can't handle the amount of heat that's generated by that saw, right? Some of it goes into motion, but some of it has to get blown away by the cooling system, the fan. Well, then things begin to increase in temperature until they stop, right? You have to have the cooling system have a larger capability of removing the heat than the, uh, the, the saw burning gas and air has the ability to generate heat. It has to be somewhere around equilibrium for a normal work saw. And on a continuous situation like milling, the cooling system has to be able to keep up with however much power is being generated, how much heat is uh, generated as a result. You know, there's an efficiency here. A lot of the saw mods, um, they're about cutting for, you know, 10, 20 seconds at a time. And a work saw is about doing that over a period of time and not having it uh, get so much heat into the system where it comes apart. But when you get into milling and things like that or bucking or, you know, really heavy log duty where, like the guys out west where they're hogging into 10-foot trees with long bars, you better have a good balance between the amount of power made, the efficiency of how that power is converted to rotational energy, 
and the ability for the saw to cool itself. Otherwise, you know, you, you defeat the oil and the, and the engine eventually seizes. Does that make any sense? And then the muffler, I mean, the muffler is an integral part of that. I, I should open up the outlet on that, and that helps to get rid of some heat. Sounds cool too. And if I have it directed off to the proper side, like that one is, um, I don't get a bunch of junk up in my face. And, uh, so those are two messages that you don't really hear much about when people are talking about their cool, hot, modded saw and machining and all that crap. One is, have they thought about that balance between how much heat's generated as a result of what they've done versus the stock cooling system? Have they exceeded the ability of the stock cooling system and fins to rid the saw of excess heat, you know, based on uh, the efficiency of the burn, how much more gas and air is being burned now because of the modifications, you know what I'm saying? So, 800 pound gorilla. That mill, those plates are not square, so it actually flexes the bar. So that'll be accelerated wear. So I've got to do something different there. And uh, I may end up having to go back and get my Granberg because that'll ruin my bar. I like that bar. I also dinged the uh, the T25 three inch screws that I had set down in there to hold the, the first guide. So I need to take that chain off and, and sharpen it anyway, right? I have a stump to cut, so I figure I'll take that very same saw out of this fixture here and use that 288 to cut a stump. You know, it's one of the things I have to do. And I'm afraid I'm going to put this guy in the retirement home because I just have way, way too many saws to run that I want to run. And uh, I have some other saws I want to use for backup. And I want to take the time and not put it on this saw. This saw here is, has been awesome. It's just I don't want it just to sit in the back of the truck, you know, and uh, have to get weathered. It's just way, way, way too nice a saw to serve, you know, that duty. You know, it's funny because when I first bought it, I kind of bought it as a disposable 572, and then it very quickly earned my respect on the very first job it did when I had to do that big giant log that required every bit of 28 inch bar, you know? And then from that point on, it's just been a solid, solid, solid saw. So, the reason why I'm going to put it away is because I have a whole bunch of project saws I want to run and I'm going to have multiples of saws in my truck. I just don't want to carry around, you know, so many saws. I have enough backup saws where it won't be a problem. If I get back into the winter where I'm doing more production type stuff again, I may put this one back in for a backup. But I just don't want it to be out in the rain and stuff like that in the back of my truck. I want it to have a nice, warm, safe place to be until I have a need for it again. The backup saw will probably be the uh, 2165. I need to muffler mod that a little bit to let it open up and breathe. Um, it'll wear a 24-inch VersaCut bar, probably. That'll be the the backup saw, and it's, you know, it's OEM, it's production. I have that uh, G395 and this 288 I've got to put time on, but I'm going to try to get back to these, you know. I'm going to try to get back to a couple of the 70Es for firewood type operations. I've got a, a bunch of dead carcasses that I want to see if I can blend into a good working saw. This one ran beautifully, it's just that the uh, pull start broke. So, you know, I'll be doing a lot of that during the fall because that's where the fun is for me. Getting back into some of the vintage ones. And of course my L77 is going to grow a little bit. It's going to get a full size bar. And uh, it's got the power. And then of course these blue saws. And uh, put my nice modern saws away safely. I was going to break out the 572 with a heated handle, but maybe that'll wait until winter time. So what I gotta do now is pull the bar, get this thing fired up, dump the gas out, let it idle to a stop, and then I have some salvage to do on a couple of chains, including that one by the way. That one got 
into a piece of steel when I was doing some uh, noodling the other day on a different piece of wood, not out here in front, but uh, over by the house. I had a couple of big old pieces of the maple, and I got into a tap, an old-fashioned tap, and it just took all the teeth right off that saw. So, anyway. Well, after that milling episode, take a look inside here. The adjustment screw, the long one that goes into the case there, usually has some kind of a piece of plastic for like a vibration uh, damper so it doesn't back out. Well, it came out. Not there. It's gone. Probably could find it with a magnet, right? But I need to get another job done today quickly, so I'm going to rob one off one of my old Huskies and put it in there. I'm going to hope that that one right there works. I'm going to spin that one out and see if it'll work inside here. Yeah, it looks like the same. But that uh, adjuster is a little bit uh, smaller. But we'll see. And while we're doing that, I have to lo load my neighbor with dirt. I'm waiting for him to come back where I can grab another load. So maybe I'll set the camera here and video some of that because it'll be funny. I'm sure as he tries to jackknife his tractor underneath that pile before I can get to him. back to this yeah that did work I don't know if it's gonna stay there though we'll see looks like I have to get a piece of plastic or something like that so let me put the bar and chain back on see if I can get a sharpening on that chain so I can go cut his stump
Well, we'll see if we can cut anything with it. The uh, preferred does take out the gullet. But we'll see if that'll cut anything because they were all just rolled over before. Some of them I didn't get all the way done, but like that one right there. But we'll see. Either cuts or doesn't. Yeah. Not mow the lawn again. I know it. I didn't want to mow the lawn, but I gotta mow mine too. You know, the thing is, we're gonna have hay too if we want it. You know. We're just gonna have to have a temperature in order to dry it.
<laughs> they help, don't they? Have that displacement. There is no replacement for displacement. So, well, I got a scoot. That's good. We'll, we'll get it. All I care about is getting it cut off. There you go.